I want to talk a little bit about the word last. Things that last, what lasts, and how long do things last? Every idea such t since time began, every invention, every idea for a book, not to mention every last thought that we've ever had came from the mind. Just that notion by itself should be enough to point out to us that the mind is a treasure trove, if only we knew how to mine it. In fact, the Buddhists call the mind the wish-fulfilling gem, which is totally telling if we just think about it. It fulfills our wishes. And every once in a while, each of us manages to find a good idea or two in the mind and put it to work. Yet it seldom, I mean, if ever, occurs to us that the mind is what they call evergreen, always fertile. And it would seem that very few of us deliberately set out to mine it. Modern etymologists point out that the word religion comes from the Latin uh, religare, which means something like to bind or to reconnect. The Sanskrit word dharma is sometimes translated as religion or law. Really, it's the path, it's the specific method to enlightenment that the Buddha pointed out. Uh, you know, 2,500 years ago. In fact, the Buddha said there are 84,000 dharmas or paths, or ways of liberation. We each need to find that one path that works for us because one size apparently does not fit all. We could argue, and I like to actually, whether Buddhism is really a religion since it is, in essence, just a methodology for enlightenment. It has no cosmogenesis, you know, beginning or end time. It's non-theist and so on. But we could perhaps agree that religions, including Buddhism, are concerned with what is true, you know, with what lasts. And by, by last, I mean, you know, lasts longest, as the Christian Bible so elegantly says, everything comes to pass, not to stay. How long things stay, including truths and ideas, depends on how long they last, how true they are. And common sense tells us that what is made well lasts, you know, lasts longest. So true, truth, truths, all important concepts. And in this phantasmagoric world that we're all wandering in, reaching around for a touchstone, for something that lasts and that we can hang on to, it's not always easy. Truths are like the fixed stars. They have different magnitudes, different colorings. And as things fade, and they all eventually do, all things, only those truths last, which are, of course, of course, most true, made the most well. These become, I guess we could call them the pole stars in the general direction of our life. Everything else fades away. And we pilot our ship of life. You know, we set our sails by whatever we can we consider or, or that we can see as true. We do the best we can to find the brightest lights in our personal sky and we head for them. If you have ever seen the Milky Way, you know, our galaxy, on a dark night, 
stretching as it does almost vertically in the sky above, running up and down, then you know by that experience that there are not only pole stars and constellations, but vast clusters of stars that are, are that are, all belong to one group, like to one mind. Anyway, there's no lack of light in the universe, is what I'm trying to say. And so it is with our inner self. The mind, like the Milky Way, is ablaze with light, if we will just look. And as the Buddhists point out, even the light of a single match can end the darkness of eons. As for myself, I've seen the Milky Way, you know, stretch across the night sky, even marked by the planets wandering through it. But I also have had the very good fortune, very good fortune of being instructed on how to look into the mind itself, how to catch a glimpse, at least a glimpse of the actual nature of that mind. There's the old hermetic axiom, axiom uh, as above, so below. We might add that what we see outside is just what we project from inside. And were we not only to look outside in life for our truth, but also learn to gaze within, we would find that same Milky Way of lights reflected inside as well. In fact, we would also realize that the outer, the outer world is the reflection of the inner and not vice versa. I mean, there's light in there. You know, if the mind is like an ocean, Let's not spend all of our time in the shallows. 